Okay, in this example, we have a rectangular coil that's attached to a voltmeter, and then we've got a region of uniform magnetic field over here. We're going to let the rectangular coil pass through into the field and then leave the field. Okay, what's going to happen to the voltmeter reading? Okay, initially, the coil is outside the field and it's going to start moving towards the field, but there's no, no reading on the, on the voltmeter at this point because there's no increase in flux until it starts to enter the field. Okay, when it starts to enter the field, the magnetic flux linkage through the coil is going to start to increase. Okay, so when that happens, there's going to be EMF induced according to Faraday's law. And also, according to Lenz's law, there's going to be a repulsive force that's going to try to oppose this change. So it's going to try to keep that coil out of the field. So it's going to be pushing it towards the left. Okay, as this coil moves inside the field like so, well, there's no actual change in flux here. So the fl magnetic flux going through the coil is constant. Uh, it's a certain size and it's not changing. So during that stage, there's no EMF induced. So the reading on the voltmeter is zero. But then when it starts to leave, now there's a decrease in flux. So once again, it's going to be EMF induced, but according to Lenz's law, it's going to be in the opposite direction. So if it was a positive EMF at the start, it's going to be a negative EMF now. Okay, also now uh, to oppose this change, there's also going to be an attractive force now towards the left as well. Again, same, try to pull it back into the field. Uh, to oppose the decrease in flux. Okay, we've got an overhead view of the same setup, except we've got some numbers now. I'm going to plot some graphs. So the diagram shows the position of a 5 centimeter by 10 centimeter coil at time t equals 0. The coil enters the magnetic field with a flux density of 1.2 Tesla at constant speed of 2.5 centimeters per second. Complete the graph of flux time and EMF induced against time. So it's going to enter the field, so it has to travel 5 centimeters before it even starts to enter the field. So how long does it take to travel 5 centimeters when you're moving at 2.5 uh, centimeters per second? So divide this distance traveled by the speed to get the time. So it takes two seconds. So during those two seconds, there is no magnetic flux through the coil. It hasn't started to increase yet. It hasn't entered the field yet. So it's quite boring. So it's zero uh, flux and there's no change in flux either. So the EMF induced is zero. It gets more interesting when it starts to enter the field. So now you can see the flux through the coil has increased up to a maximum. Uh, where it's completely inside the field. So we need to ca calculate that flux, which is uh, the magnetic flux density times the area. So 1.2 Tesla times the distances of the, the dimensions of the coil turned into meters. That gives us this much um, magnetic flux, which we're going to draw into the graph, and it's going to be a steady increase up to that point because it entered at a constant speed. Okay. Next, we're going to use Faraday's law to figure out the EMF induced during this point because there was a change of flux. So it's going to be an EMF induced. So there's no coils. N is zero. Uh, sorry, one. Okay. And then the change in flux, it went from zero to uh, six times to the minus three Webers. So we just do six times to the minus three minus zero. So that the change is six times to the minus three. And it took two seconds to go in because it traveled another five centimeters in order to go in because of the width of the coil there. So that's the EMF induced at three times to the minus three volts, which I'm going to draw like so onto the graph. Okay, I've done it as a negative here because of Lenz's law, but it's not too important right now. It's just have to make sure that when it leaves, it's going to have an opposite sign. We'll see that in a minute. Okay, so we've got the negative voltage there. Okay, then it's going to travel at a constant speed for 15 centimeters. 15 centimeters because it's the whole width is 20 centimeters, but the width of the coil is also 5 centimeters. So it's going to travel this far. How long is it going to take to this? Once again, let's do the distance divided by time. So 15 centimeters divided by 2.5 seconds, six seconds to do so. And during those six seconds, the flux through the coil is maximum and is not changing. It's a constant six times to the minus three Webers. So because there's no change in flux during that stage, there's no EMF induced because Faraday's law tells us there needs to be a rate of change of magnetic flux in order for an EMF to be induced. So we get a line of zero volts. Okay, so there's no uh, EMF induced there. Okay, then it's going to start to leave and now the flux is decreasing. Okay, so because the flux is decreasing, again, it's going to be an EMF induced. It's decreasing all the way to zero, so it looks like so. Okay, so according to Faraday's law, it's going to be uh, an EMF induced, and that's from the rate of change of flux, and it's decreasing from 600 minus 3 in two seconds. Um, so it's the same voltage, but except now it's going to be positive. Okay, so it's going to give, going to give it a positive reading here, because before the current and the EMF was induced to oppose the increase in flux, now the current and the EMF induced are going to try to oppose the decrease in flux. Okay, so there's a reading like so. And then once it's left and is moving outside, well, the flux is 
zero during that whole stage and is not changing. So again, the EMF induced goes back to zero because there's no change in flux.